Are you afraid or intimidated of your own psychic gifts or abilities? I want you to know that you're not alone in that. In fact, I am sometimes inundated by emails and messages from people who tell me that they would love to dive into their psychic abilities further, but they're kind of afraid of that. So let's go ahead and dive into the three different reasons that people might fear their own abilities. Before we do, allow me to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Nicole Antoinette and I'm a psychic medium and spiritual mentor. Here on this channel, I love to encourage people to accept, embrace, and enhance their own spiritual and psychic gifts. And I think that one of the ways for you to be able to do that is to confront some fears you may have and to acknowledge certain fears you may have regarding your psychic abilities and why you have them. So the first one I want to dive into is the possible brainwashing you may have been subjected to when you were a child or a teenager. So as you were growing up, you may have had parents that had very strict religious beliefs. They may have believed that any notion, any idea, any opinion or experience that didn't match their religious background or the rules of their religious or the rules of their religion were evil or just flat out incorrect. So growing up in that type of environment can be scary because if your parents or caretakers are telling you that this is how things are on a spiritual level, everything's black and white, and if you have experiences outside of what we believe is normal and acceptable, then you're wrong. You're in dangerous territory. And there's different ways that that message can be conveyed to you. For example, when I was a child, my parents were strict Christians, but they kind of had their own, I guess you could say, Christian beliefs, like they kind of formed their own theologies, and they believed that anything outside of their opinions and their belief systems of their own version of Christianity was evil. They believed that ghosts and spirits were demons in disguise, and so I grew up with that form of thinking, which was very intimidating and scary to me because even as a young age, I could sense spirits. I didn't see them, but I could just sends different energies. And so if you grew up in a similar environment, you may have been very confused and very scared because you didn't have adults around you that you could talk to about your experiences and know that they would support you and love you and nurture you and offer you compassion, guidance, and love. So if that's the type of environment you grew up in, or if you grew up in something similar, it makes sense that that type of program would leave behind a trace of fear, or maybe not even a trace, maybe just a big mark of fear in your energy, in your aura, and really in uh, in your body, because we know that our body holds trauma. And of course, you know, your mind holds on to every story and every experience you've ever had. If you grew up in that environment, there might be some of those fearful beliefs that are still at play. Play. The second reason that you may fear your spiritual and psychic gifts is because you may have had a scary spiritual experience. And I feel like this is something that is not spoken about enough in healthy circles. All of us have seen different TV shows where someone talks about a really scary or intimidating paranormal experience that they had. This person conveying this story may have been a normal person who moved into a farmhouse or into a house that happened to be haunted and they had terrifying experiences. They may have worked at a school or a hospital where they saw ghostly apparitions or it could even be that they were paranormal investigators and they wandered into a territory that they were unprepared for. They maybe saw some things, heard some things, felt some things, or captured evidence that made them feel unsafe. We do want to be mindful of the situations we put ourselves into, not just as sensitive, intuitive people, but as human beings in general, because even muggles, 
animals are prone to having scary experiences with the paranormal. The reason I say that we don't talk about this enough in healthy circles is because there are plenty of podcasts and TV shows that really elevate the sensation of fear when it comes to spiritual and psychic abilities and paranormal experiences. And when those things are talked about in that venue through a form of media, those stories aren't being shared to provide comfort to other people. Although I do believe that's a side effect. I do believe that people coming forward and telling their story is very beneficial to a community because it makes other people who've had similar experiences know that they're not alone and that they can and maybe even should talk about these things so they can feel less alone, right? But the problem with that is that talking about our trauma, even on a spiritual level, psychic or paranormal, talking about it isn't enough. In fact, sometimes if we continually repeat an experience and a story of that experience enough, we start to really allow that fear in the paranormal to grow. And that's not good, that's not healthy. We definitely need to be able to talk about the experiences that we've had with ghosts and evil spirits that terrified us. We need to have that outlet. You need to have that outlet. In fact, you deserve it. But we also need to have a community that allows us to heal from that experience. So how do you heal from it? Well, first is acknowledging that that type of experience is normal, it's unfortunately common. I mean, obviously everyone's experience is unique, but it's not uncommon for people to have some type of negative experience with the ghost or with um, some type of, I wanna say just being or entity in extremely haunted locations. Like that is that that is normal, right? We can come to expect that. However, that one experience doesn't pave the entire story when it comes to your spiritual and psychic gifts because you are so much more than that one story. You're so much more than one experience. And you know what? You survived that experience, which means you're strong, which means you're a survivor, which means there's more for you to do. It also means that that experience, regardless of how yucky it was, maybe gave you some insight into your abilities, into your psychic gifts. So if you saw something that no one else saw, you could be clairvoyant. If you heard something that was captured on an EVP or even not, and maybe no one else heard it, or maybe other people did, you know, every experience is unique, that may tell you that you have clairaudience abilities. The thing that's good about that is it means you can fine tune them for things that are good. Because if you can see a scary spirit, it means you can also see a nice spirit. It means you have the ability to tune into the good things and see the good things and hear the good things and have wonderfully wholesome and fulfilling spiritual experiences. And the reason you need to be in a healthy spiritual community for that is because you need to start hearing about those experiences. Because when we can hear about the healthy, beneficial, positive experiences of other people, we start to become less fearful of what happened to us. And we start to look forward to having good things happen. There are different ways that we can heal from our paranormal experiences. There's um, energy healing. There's, of course, different types of therapy. There's EFT, also known as tapping. Uh, EFT is also known as emotional freedom technique. EFT is also known to help with issues of PTSD and CPTSD which I do think can be unfortunate side effects of having a scary paranormal experience. If you've ever had that before, talk about it. Be sure that you find someone safe that you can talk to about that experience. The last reason you might be afraid of your abilities is because of the social stigma that's still out there. Unfortunately, it still exists. And the reality is that as long as there are opinionated people out there, and there's always going to be opinionated people out there, 
as long as people are judgy and jealous and angry and narcissistic and sociopathic or whatever it is, they're always going to have opinions. So there's always going to be people out there who are kind of mean to you when it comes to your abilities. The reality is that this meanness and coldness and bully-like behavior has nothing to do with you. And that's kind of hard to grasp, isn't it? Because if someone is behaving a certain way towards us, we take it very personally. And rightfully so, because they're in a way inviting us into a toxic experience that we didn't want to be a part of. When people reflect that at us, or when they push that experience on us, it's really uncomfortable, right? It's just, ugh, it doesn't feel good at all, and it's not supposed to. It's not supposed to feel good. And the reason for that is because every experience we have, we will have an emotional response to, right? Unless we're depressed or there's something going on where our emotions aren't working well. But even in those cases, there's usually some type of stimuli that we have, that we experience, even if it's a thought, right? And so when we have those experiences of people bullying us or being harsh towards us, because of our abilities, that emotional response that we have, or the thought that we have that tells us, whoa, this is not what I signed up for, this is not the experience I want, that's feedback. And it's good feedback because when we get emotional feedback, when we get some type of inner stimuli, inner response, that gives us an idea as to whether or not we are surrounding ourselves with people who are safe or unsafe if we're in a situation that's good or not good, right? So we wanna pay attention to all of the feedback that we get within our system, regardless of how it shows up. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that every form of feedback that we get is giving us correct factual information. And here's what I mean by that. I used to be terrified of heights, terrified of them. I didn't like to go up on hills. I didn't like to go up on mountains. Um, if I went up on roller coasters, which I've always gone on roller coasters, and I would go, you know, uphill, and at the top of that hill, at the top of the track, you're just kind of suspended there for a while waiting for that, you know, that downfall, waiting for the, the car to go down the track. My hands would get so clammy, I would have to close my eyes for that moment when I'm on the very top of the track because I just hated heights. I couldn't even look out over them. And of course, the sensation that my body was feeling was anxiety. It was fear because I did not feel safe. So that was what that stimuli, what that emotion was telling me is that this is not safe. But the reality is that I have survived thousands of trips on roller coasters. <laughs> I was always safe. I was always buckled in. Nothing bad ever happened to me on a roller coaster. Actually, that's not true. But that's not what we're talking about today. So <laughs> I have never fallen out of a roller coaster, happy to say. I've never endured some insane injury other than, you know, maybe a creaked neck because I went on something I shouldn't have gone on. Um, but I've always been safe. Being on the very, very top of that roller coaster was very safe, but it didn't feel that way. And so because of that emotional stimuli that I had, I knew that I have a fear of heights, right? I have a fear of heights. I have to decide if that is a legitimate fear as far as being on roller coasters or being on top of a mountain. Am I really unsafe there? If not, how can I gain confidence? How can I be better at being in situations where I'm up high? And I'm happy to say that I don't really have that fear anymore. Maybe in certain situations it might still come up, but for the most part I can go on ski lifts, I can go on bridges, I can go on anything, and that stimuli, that fearful reaction is no longer there. Why? I think it's because I just kept confronting it. I kept putting myself in situations where I was constantly <laughs> on the top of a mountain, at the top of a hill on a roller coaster, top of the track of a roller coaster, and I just kept doing it over and over and over again, and eventually my mind and my body got the message of, oh, this isn't just safe, 
this is fun. This is wonderful. This view from the top of the mountain is gorgeous. This view from the top of the roller coaster track is fun. And oh yeah, Ooh, the down part, <laughs> the downhill part, the downhill rush of the roller coaster is a lot of fun. It gives me a great adrenaline rush. So by confronting that over and over again, I finally got over that fear. You may find that as you continually meet with people who reject your psychic abilities or they feel like all psychics are frauds or all healers are charlatans or whatever the belief is, as you continue to meet more and more of those people, they're going to prick you less and less. They're going to bother you less and less. That said, you may still have a bad day where some type of skeptic is going to say something mean or harsh. It's going to pain you more than it normally does. It, it happens to me too. But if you're brave and you continue to dive into your spiritual path, if you continue to walk it and you remain open about it, you're going to get haters. You're going to get people who are not nice to you and it is going to be shocking and it is going to suck. <laughs> like just flat out, it's not fun. But the insults that they throw become less hurtful. The way that they behave becomes less painful and you'll get to a point where you realize, you know what, that person is just lashing out at me because of something going on in them and you'll get braver and you'll get stronger. That said, you don't have to sit at their table. You don't have to continue to put yourself in a situation where you have a back and forth with them, especially if you know that their goal is simply to shut you down, right? They don't want to hear your proof. They don't want to hear about your experience because it's very important to them that they be right and really what they're doing is they're trying to dominate you with their words and their actions. They want an admission of guilt from you. They want you to somehow say, you know what, you're right. You proved to me beyond a shadow of a doubt through your bullying, through your thick mindedness, thick headedness, that everything I believe in is all junk. Like none of this is real. You're right, I'm not psychic after all. That's really what they want from you. And that's not what they're going to get, right? Like, you know your psychic abilities are real. <laughs> you know what you're capable of. You know what your experiences are. So you don't have to engage in those people. In fact, I suggest that you don't unless, unless you really do believe that you're working with someone who has the ability to be open-minded and they're asking good questions and they're not bullying you, right? They're just asking questions and sharing experiences. And maybe they're saying things like, hmm, well, I appreciate what you're saying to me, but I don't know if I believe in that. That's fine. They don't have to believe in that, right? So if they're being respectful and they're just wanting to converse with you, of course, that's fine. But anyone who's being hateful or who's being a bully, you don't have to entertain that. Again, you don't have to sit at their table. As you continue down your spiritual path, you will find people who are like-minded though. So please don't allow the skeptics and the bullies to keep you small. Don't allow them to keep you small. You are so much bigger and brighter and more wonderful and powerful than that. And you deserve to be embraced and accepted for who you are and you deserve to be embraced and accepted by people who love your spiritual gifts, who think that your psychic abilities and your spiritual mindset are just so wonderful and so interesting. Even if they don't agree with everything that you believe in, they still find it fascinating, right? Those are the type of people that you want to be around. And the more you embrace yourself and the more that you seek out those type of people and communities, and the more you pray about it. Remember, you've got a whole spirit team available to you, your guides, your angels, your ancestors, God, goddess, they're all there for you. They're here for it, right? <laughs> they're showing up for you, babe. So show up for them, ask them for help in finding that community. And I guarantee you, they will bring that community to you. It may take time. It may trickle in. It may not come in all at once, but they'll bring you what it is that you're asking for. So my friend, you deserve to feel safe 
when it comes to your spiritual and psychic gifts. And that's why I actually have a free resource for you. So um, quite a while ago, I channeled this wonderful contemplative visualization where we dive in to the fact that your psychic abilities are God-given gifts. And so I created a guided meditation or guided visualization that will help you to overcome the fears that you may have when it comes to being psychic. And hopefully this meditation will help you to feel more safe, to feel more secure, and again, to really drive it home that your gifts were given to you by God. These are gifts, my love. They're not anything for you to be afraid of, okay? So if you're interested in that resource, please check out the description area down below. The link is there, and you can get this resource for absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything. So my friends, I hope that you found this video helpful. If so, please be sure that you give it a like. And also, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel. Also, be sure that you hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new videos in the future. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.